Welcome to the Meditation Podcast. You can find all our episodes on meditationpodcast.org. We're also on BitChute and YouTube. You'll find the links in the podcast description. I'm also a podcasting coach because I've got five podcasts. you find everything on bio.link forward slash podcast. Today, my guest, she's an author, not a one book, but a few. She's a speaker. She's a master practitioner of NPL, NLP, sorry, and also the founder of Spa for the Soul, and a psychologist, please welcome Dr. Daphne Earhart. Thank you, Roy. It's nice to be here with you today. Nice to talk to you. Yeah, and uh, I suppose we'll start off because uh, you're also a world traveler. And I don't know, is it 49? It might be more now from the, what I've seen, 49 countries. But you're uh, you're traveling around. So I suppose what I'd like to know is, obviously, we've discussed prior to recording, you've been to my beautiful uh hometown in Cork in Ireland but where did you find that you were more at peace because I found when I was in Costa Rica there was just some places that just touched the soul and I'm just because you've been to so many countries as well as I think 49 states in the the US yeah I mean that's (laughs) that's incredible because that's like 49 (laughs) countries because I know they're all organized totally different so it's just (laughs) but where where did you feel at home like what what felt for you oh my goodness I've had well that is a very great question because throughout my travels, I've started to realize that I feel at home, I create my home inside of me and and I, I create the sense of home. And this is perfect because we're going to be talking about meditation today and how to create that sense of home inside. But I found there's so many places throughout the world, whether it's Ireland or Iceland or Vietnam or Costa Rica or all these places they're so different but I can still I I go from place to place and sometimes it just hits me and I'm just like wow this is one of these moments in life where I feel so blessed and so it feels so beautiful to be a citizen of the earth you know the earth is my home and like with all the kind of doom and gloom that if you watch CNN and all these stupid media the reality is people are beautiful everywhere. I mean, anywhere I've lived, there's, there are so nice. I don't live, you don't live in fairs. Know. Like everyone is out to help you. Yes. Yes. I love that. It's so true. <laughs> I know. I stand in line in Luang Prabang, uh, Lao, and then where it's taken hours and days just to arrive there and then find just a very friendly, happy, helpful soul. Even when I, cannot speak the languages I've been standing in the hot sun for three hours but then there's this person next to you and you just start communicating even though you don't have the same language it's just um a heart kind of connection anywhere it's really beautiful (laughs) exactly exactly so I'd love to I know we're going to touch on the meditation and the different things you're doing but I'd like to know your own meditation journey oh okay well my meditation journey that's a great <laughs> i love your questions i never thought of it that way before i feel like i feel a little bit like it, it just goes along with my personality i'm kind of like a walking meditation i kind of have the the personality of not i, I wasn't a born extrovert i'm i was a born introvert and yet i'm very affected by people in the world around me and very sensitive to the world and to anything so to kind of deal with life and cope with that sensitivity I've become able to I had to create this way of having this sense of peace inside of me no matter what and I found that not through traditional meditation I didn't I didn't impose it on myself to meditate this certain way, but I just realized as I would go to this course and this course as a psychologist, you go to a lot of trainings throughout your life, you know, and then I would just elect to go to more and more and more. And I realized this is beautiful. I actually, the theta waves in the brain that it puts you in is similar to when you're falling asleep and waking up and when you have that intuition and children up until, I don't know, age 13 or so have this natural ability to kind of be in this awareness state 
And for us to be able to do meditations and kind of access that state on purpose, it, it just gave me the ability to, no matter what I'm doing, no matter where I am, I can kind of reset and ground inside. So if I'm in a busy airport or craziness is going on around me, I can say, okay, that's what's going on around me. I can kind of reset. It can kind of be like a little timeout for myself and put myself in a good, good mental, emotional, physical state, no matter what is going on around me. And um, this different sense of awareness. And I, I love it. And I've created, a, I, I felt like it's kind of like a spa for my soul inside of me. <laughs> so I decided to kind of help other people create a spa for the soul and, and them too. So that's step by step kind of how I became interested in it. And you mentioned about uh, like children to about 13 and then they kind of lose that. Do you think it's the parents' negative approach to it, or is it the education system that seems to be flawed that kind of gets them out of that kind of beautiful state, let's call it? Yeah, I never really, I don't really know what it is that, or if it's a natural process of the brain, or if we could help that maybe through letting, through education, through letting them explore what they're interested in and have those moments where they're not imposed from the outside in, but kind of from the inside out, uh, what they're curious about. Um, but yes, we are bombarded with the news, with things we quote unquote should be thinking about or focusing on. So it's good to take charge of that and be aware. Uh, oh, look, I'm thinking in this negative process right now. I'm, I'm scared, I'm living in fear. Let me reset. I'm in charge of my own feelings. I'm in charge of my own mindset. And then put yourself into that. Yeah, excellent. And I suppose since we're on about children, teenagers, because I see that everyone now is unfortunately not only addicted to their phones, but also gaming. And I know that's something that you have wrote <laughs> about. So perhaps you could kind of, everybody's got the, pro like from what I can see from like my youngest child, he's, uh, he's turning nine next month. He does play games, plays, but I make sure that he's kind of limited or that he's doing other things. And, you know, we're playing chess, we're reading and doing. I don't stop him because I think I know myself. Like we're going back to computer games where you had to put a cassette player in and wait 10, 10 minutes for it to load, like a Spectrum 48 game, <laughs> Commodore 64. Most of the listeners won't even know what that was. But I know that I kind of got addicted to gaming for a few years and then just went totally off it but i know what the friends that i have they're still kind of still really into gaming and it, i think it's there's yeah. advantages but disadvantages. but i'd love to because yeah. obviously you've done a lot of research plus <laughs> as well as probably clients as well that are suffered from this mm -hmm. so i'd love to know more about it yeah good point uh yes so my co-author and i aaron huey and i he's the parenting expert uh, we just wrote a book and just published two weeks ago. It's called Parenting Teens That Struggle with Video Games. So it's to help the parents who have a teen that struggles with video games. And not all teens do. Some te uh, Most people don't have a struggle or addiction with video games. But the video game, like you mentioned, it is, it it it's geared to draw you in and they know how the brain works and they work with that to get you to need to get to the next level to be glued to that screen. So in our book, we, there's a whole chapter, I think it's chapter seven, where uh, we, we teach the parents how to use those, um, those methods, the same methods the video games use to draw the child in to just want to keep on doing it use that in parenting so that you kind of switch it <laughs> so that you're wanting to um, use it in the parenting aspect of it. But yes, the brain that it's the same concept of being aware and creating the being on purpose when it comes to attention, what you're paying attention to, what your child is paying attention to with video games or meditation. And 
I think, like, I've noticed that with my child that, okay, let's play Uno, let's play chess, or we've got a very a sponge football in the house, so we're playing football a lot, we just love playing football. And he's, you know, once he's done that, he is not interested in the game. But there's times, you know, if I'm cooking or something like that, or he just decides he wants to have his moment. But I've yeah. also noticed that he enjoys it when I pay attention to what he's doing as well and he's showing me and explaining it. Whereas a lot of the time, the parents, they just don't even know what they're at and they're letting them go. Like, I think it was Grand Theft Auto. Like, some of the games are so sick. <laughs> you know, you're going around, you're driving down, you're knocking down people and you're beating them up. Like, people must be conscious that where does, especially a young child, like, yeah, how to yeah. decipher what's real and what's not. The same with a lot of these military games where they're going around and they've got all the headset and it looks real. And like, because yeah. I believe just from horrors, I used to watch horrors. Yeah, I don't watch horrors anymore because I don't think the brain knows. And I think I sleep fantastic. In, and I believe yeah, like watching horror movies and playing bad games, there's probably good games for coordination and stuff like that. But I think it actually can't be good for you. No, it affects the brain in the same way. If you experience a a, a, a trauma um, that's virtual, it really does affect the brain in the same way. And it's really great what you're doing with your. Uh, do, are you you are a parent of a teen? I take it. Yeah, he, he's he yeah he's he's eight. He'd be nine at the end of the month. Oh, you know? okay. <laughs> yeah, but great. I think he's been here before. He's like he's just totally present with what's going on. He's eight, going on thirteen. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's a great way to connect with them to just understand why they're so interested in it and go along with them and do it. Yeah, that's nice. So I know that one of the other things, you have another book, um, I have it written, The Shrink. And yeah. is that more on the stress element or what What does that book uh, cover? Shrink was my first book. And it's, the, it's very close to my heart because, well, it's a play on words, first of all, because I'm a shrink. I'm a psychologist. I'm a shrink. I'll, I'll play around with that word. But also it was geared to for weight loss, but not weight loss in a diet and exercise type of way. It's geared in a way so that you create a life you love, a lifestyle you love. You eat foods you love that are also nourishing to your body and soul. And you do activities that are good for your, you create, you create boundaries, healthy relationships. So you feel fulfilled from the inside out. And it, and it goes along with meditation, just this whole lifestyle of feeling good inside, um, creating a whole life that you love. There's so many diet and exercise books where they say, this is how you need to live your life and eat. You have to get up at 4.30 and exercise hard. And then you deny yourself of anything that tastes good. And then you're always tired and you, know, you do this and this and this. Sure, it can work for some people if if that's your personality and that works for you. And, and there are other ways to do it. And the best way I believe is to not to I, I like to give people the respect of their own soul to discover and explore what is their way of living the most healthy and healthy life that feels good to them and i do some guided meditations that actually guide them on that journey um i have a couple i have some that are free on my youtube channel but i also have some on my website that um for a free gift or that you you can get later but it guides you to kind of discover your your higher self or your ideal self and what that actually is because sometimes we're not even in touch with what our soul's deepest craving is. We don't even know what would my ideal life be. We just go through automatic um, living, you know? And once we just give ourselves that nurturing inside and respect and, and let our, our minds just be in that state of in between and access what what do I really want my, my life to be like? What do I want my relationships to be like? If I woke up tomorrow and my life was the way I was my ideal, what would be the first thing I noticed? What, how would I know? What does it exactly feel like and 
everything. So it sounds like a, a movie I know, like a Disney yeah. movie. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's, it's very important. And like based on that, because whether it's for health reasons or also for financial reasons, people say, oh, don't go for the coffee, you know, and cut that out and everything. And I always say, I think it's the worst advice ever, because if that brings you so much joy, and even yeah. if you fi fi find, instead of having that at home, that you like to go to your local coffee shop, because you're talking to the the, the coffee people yes. around the way and meeting people, and you could find your soulmate or just do a business deal or whatever, you're in the right zone. And if that's what lifts your soul, but most of the time people are saying, oh, don't do this. You're basically, you're sucking the energy out of your life and what you I do. Know. You, know, you go home and drink green tea, which you don't like, and you're thinking, <laughs> oh, now my life is better. So I think you have to find from within what you love yes. and then you're happy. You know, I like I hear I'm everything I read. Coffee's good for you. Coffee's bad for you. I like it. <laughs> I, what I've noticed is the type of coffee that you get can be different. So you, you get oh, yeah. very good coffee. You can get really bad. Like instant coffee is not good for you. Apparently right. it goes off because when I stood, but things like that, you can actually make sure maybe it's just that you've got a poor quality coffee and that's why you think that it's not great for you but when yeah. you find something even if it's tea whatever it floats your boat exactly. that lifts your soul up <laughs> exactly i've heard there's um organic coffee has great nutrients in it some organic coffees i mean <clears throat> yeah i love that <laughs> and i've even heard of like people say oh i get decaf i've heard that's actually bad for you whatever way that they process it so, oh really yeah. i didn't even know that yeah it's so <laughs> that you know, makes sense yeah so you know and same with flavored ones and everything whatever way that they do it that it's not great so i yes. think research what you love but do what you know, lifts the soul. so if, with the craziness around the world a lot of people are they get stressed easy i don't let it in but a lot of people unfortunately do yes what kind of advice could you give to people to kind of control the stress oh my goodness yes and we're oh it is a stressful world right now I mean there's so much it can be so much fear uh with really real issues real legit it's legitimate issues to to be scared about but there are certain things that we can control and there are things that we can't control and it's easier said than done, I know, to let go of what you can and can't control. But I think that there's certain things you can do, like just nurturing yourself and giving yourself the permission to feel that fear sometimes. And, uh, you know, if, if we push certain emotions away, whether it's fear or guilt or sadness and never actually process it, it doesn't necessarily make it go away permanently. You know, it just sweeps it under the rug. So to let, uh, I think Brene Brown mentioned in one of her documentaries, or in her main documentary, I love her documentary. She says something to the effect of the amount of, the, the ability that you're able to feel everything, even the uncomfortable feelings and be vulnerable and feel that fear and feel the sadness, then you're able to just let it dissipate and then move towards something, whatever is next. So give yourself some time, maybe when you're meditating, um, even in meditation, I mean, you don't need to push it away. You don't need to push anything away. You can acknowledge it. So when that fear comes, when that sadness comes, bubbles up for some reason or whatever the emotion is that you'd rather not have, let it be there for a minute, acknowledge it. Almost like a cloud floating by in the sky. You see the clouds going by, you acknowledge it. <clears throat> you don't just say, oh no, I don't see you. I don't see you. <laughs> you would say, okay, yes, you're there for a reason. You experienced something very scary or you had something sad. Everyone has had sad things happen to them in their life. Acknowledge it, let yourself feel it deeply and then let it dissipate. Have you noticed that when we're sad or when we cry, have you ever, uh, children can't cry forever. <laughs> they cry, they cry really hard and they're really upset or they're very angry, 
let's say they're angry, they throw the tantrum, but they, you know how much energy that takes to keep that up for an hour? That would be too much energy. <laughs> it dissipates because they let themselves feel it completely. And then they're happy and bouncing and doing something else. So you let it, you acknowledge it, but then you let it go by and then you choose what to focus on next. So that would be an analogy I would choose. That. And, and I think like a lot of men fear crying. And I think that if you have the emotion, don't care about anyone. Like be you be you. And I see it with my son. I, I love seeing that with a child like that. If he does cry, it's like five minutes later, he's laughing and as if it never happened. Whereas adults tend to cling on to that emotion for the whole day and sometimes yeah. for a lot longer. Yeah, it takes a lot of strength to admit what you're actually feeling and face it. I think it's easier just to say, no, nope, I'm not going to, I'm fine. I'm fine. But no, if you actually face the most difficult things, that takes the most strength and bravery, I believe. Exactly. So yeah. you're a master pr practitioner of uh, NLP. So you might let me know what, what, what exactly you're doing with that. Okay. N NLP, uh, Neuro Linguistic Programming is the study of how the brain, neuro, and speech programs us. And it's kind of weird. It's it's kind of like we're a computer program. You can think of it that way. We're not, obviously, but um, it's kind of like an analogy. So how we speak and, and the words we use really shape our experiences. So one small example is did you know that the brain doesn't really process negatives? So when you say, don't think of eating ice cream, I'm not going to eat ice cream. The don't, the not, not. I'm not going to have ice cream for one week. You know what you're actually thinking the whole time is ice cream, ice cream, ice cream. You're actually thinking about ice cream the whole time. <laughs> and people do the same with money. I don't want to be broke. Yes, exactly. So you're actually focusing. So re when you realize that, you start taking out the negatives. So if you don't use, I hate saying this, don't use don't. If you use positives <laughs> and you, as a human, we tend to move towards what we focus on. And so when we focus on, even when our words focus on, whatever it is uh just keep in mind that they don't process negative so you are focusing on that so focus on what you want not on what you don't want <laughs> that's one example but there are so many aspects to neurolinguistic programming it's, it's very complex but it's very fascinating too because we're actually bombarded every day with advertisements with with just interactions of and we don't realize it until we consciously uh, take steps to be in charge of our own mind and body and spirit. And that's where the meditation comes into to, you know, you can meditate for 10 seconds or 10 minutes. You can choose how long it is, but yeah. Um, breath is really important too with meditation. Um, sometimes if parents or anyone who's stressed out if you're at, at work or your child is screaming or whatever, sometimes you just take a quick time out for yourself and breathe. And the exhale actually calms the nervous system more than the inhale. It, it does a reset if you make the exhale longer than the inhale and um, focus on the breathing. And with somebody, because like, like basically I mentioned at the start, and I think that what we're discussing is so relevant. So this will be on the Awakening podcast as well, because, you know, it's kind of exposing fraud and corruption, but also with solutions. And I think a lot of the things that we're discussing is kind of issues that are, you know, common to absolutely everybody, basically. Everyone is aware of what we've discussed today. Yeah. So like with someone that's, because a lot there's a lot of taboo over meditation and you know some people kind of they've never tried it or they think their mind is all over the place oh i could never do it so for people that they kind of don't really know what would you advise advise them to be to getting into it oh yes um there are many different types of meditation and when i 
do meditation myself, I use the word loosely. I am not, uh, I don't think, I think you should use meditation as a tool for you. So there are many ways to go about it. Uh, sometimes beginners like to use guided meditations because it's easier and someone can guide you through it. And then you start getting the hang of it and you're like, oh, I liked that part. I like the part that works for me better when I have some imagery or when someone just guides me through relaxing my body or <clears throat> when I hear another voice or with some of my meditations, I use solfeggio frequencies in the background that someone else does. I don't create those, but uh, there's so many different aspects to it. So I guess for a, a new person, I would say, if you want to do it on your own, choose one word or one phrase. It can be love. It can be peace. It can be leaves. It can be anything you like. <laughs> and um, when I was in Thailand a few months ago, I was with some monks and I liked to hear how different people do it. And they, they had different, they said, focus on this part in your belly, like focus on the center in your body. So you can do it many different ways. Just find one thing to focus on. And the key to that is not to, the key, I'm not gonna use negatives. <laughs> the, key, the key to that is uh, to quiet the mind. So instead of thinking, oh my goodness, I need, I need to have these 10 things done by the end of the day. I need to make breakfast for the kids. Then I need to go to work. And at that at work, I have to talk to that person I don't like to talk to, to get this job. And then this and this, how am I going to phrase this? How am I going to write this email? How, and whew, focus on one thing, <laughs> blue, a color. It could be anything. And then breathe. The breathing is key. I could actually walk. I could just do a short meditation if that yeah, would be. It. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Should I do it right now? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. If you feel ready for it. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll just do a, a really, really tiny, short one. So, um, to just to use to refocus. So first of all, you can close your eyes so you don't have distractions. I recommend it. But if you can't, that, if you don't want to, that's okay too. Take a breath in and then exhale. And to make sure the exhale is longer than the inhale, you can breathe in, count maybe to three. Breathe in, one, two, three, and then hold. And then breathe out and then count one, two, three, four, five, six, and then breathe in again. And keep on doing this as you hear me talking. Hold, and then breathe out. Count to six. Keep on breathing like this, making the exhale longer. You might not feel it in the first second, but maybe after 30 seconds, you'll start to slow down a little bit. And as you do that, scan your body from head to toe. When I say scan, just sense how your body feels. From the top of your head, face, neck, do you feel any tension? If you feel tension, breathe through it and relax that area of your body. And sometimes what helps to relax that area is to tense it up first. So. For example, if your neck is tense, just squeeze it and then let, let it go. And then that will release the tension in that area. And then keep on breathing. And then focus on that one thing. It could be peace. Let's just say peace because that's what we want today. Just focus on peace, the word peace, as you keep on breathing in and out. And then as you start to maybe notice some things come through your head, like, oh, I need to do this, I need to do that, acknowledge it, let it go. And imagine it as waves in the ocean rolling in 
and then rolling out, letting everything that you know no longer serves you release and roll out. And you can keep on doing this. This is only, we're just doing a quick two minutes. And you just keep on doing this for as long as it serves you. And then once you start feeling that centeredness, maybe you feel it in your stomach or in your head or whatever, you can start fluttering your eyes open, coming back to now. And you might find a better awareness, a better, a better ability to pay attention to what's going on in you and have more control and centeredness in you while no matter what is going on around you, craziness in the airport, craziness and whatever, chaos, you still have your own center inside. Beautiful, beautiful. And I know that uh, we've discussed this earlier that you'll be sending me some meditations as well that they'll yeah. go on on the the meditation podcast so people because you've got a beautiful voice and these calming voice as well so i know that people will like so just for those listening both on the awakening and the meditation you'll you'll find some meditations later that will actually be added to to yeah i'll send you a few and you can use them on the podcast people can just listen to them uh, over and over if if they want to for their yeah as much as they want and just fine. I don't know, is it another book or was it a blog? But uh, you had one on finding the right partner because I know that during the last two, two and a half years craziness, people ended up living with each other, probably spending more time with each other than they ever did in their life. And there's been so many breakups, divorces, and everything. And <laughs> so now yes, people are trying so to <laughs> now people yes. are trying to find the right partner. So was it is it a book or is it a it's kind... a book. That that one is only a Kindle book. The other two are paperback and Kindle, but the second book I wrote, it's called Get Her to Swipe Right. <clears throat> and that is for online dating, because especially during COVID, you know, pe- we still have the, the need to connect with people. It's lovely to connect and we need each other even more than ever. So online dating is a great way to date, especially when it doesn't happen naturally as, as much as it used to. So it's basically a book walking walking men how to find their right partner. But you know what? I'm going to, I might revise that book or add one for women. <laughs> but it's a, a very, it's a very easy step-by-step guide. You know, this is how you create a profile if you've never done it before. Uh, this is how you go through the first interactions. It's very simple, very easy. It's at it's for the beginning of of internet dating to be able to connect yeah because I, I know there's two kind of sides on the internet dating i know people they've met their soulmates they got married happy and then there's others they just use it as a kind of <laughs> social kind of thing to casual good sex point. For, yeah <laughs> good point this one is for this is only for when you want to find the actual life partner i wrote it geared for that it no, no problem if you want it for whatever but that's what the book is for <laughs> yeah and yeah just finally i know you do retreats as well so what's your retreats about soul spa is the name of the retreats that i do and it's mostly for employees employee wellness programs so if you have a company or the company you work for does any kind of employee wellness uh, i can you can mention that I can do employee wellness programs for your company. And what I do usually is take an hour during their week and do meditations to in the moment, just help relieve stress, help focus the, the mind and the body and, and center. So, because you know what, you know, there's the great resignation that happened started about a year ago. Everyone was quitting their jobs. There's also, a lot of stress right now in in the workforce and learning how, uh, people are valuing more that they're if they're living a life with their work with their family and all aspects of their life they want it to be meaningful making a ton of money it's of course it's great but it it's not as meaningful if you're not happy during those 40, 30, 40, 50 hours, whatever, that's, this is our life. So uh, learning how to create that 
peace and joy throughout the work environment is what I'm focusing on with the soul spa. But I also am doing some other soul spas for everybody to be invited to as well. Next. You might uh, definitely let people know where they can find you. Oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you can go to spaforthesoul.com. That's spa, the number four, thesoul.com. And that's my website. If you ever want to follow my travels, I also have a travel channel that has some meditations and psychological trainings for free. And it's called Soul Spa Travel on YouTube. I'm on Instagram, Dr. Daphne. But I would say the main place to go, the number one place to go is spaforthesoul.com. Because if you wanted to find where where to find me in, um, on the other channels, you can find me through there, spotforthesoul.com. And, and, and you have your books as well. Your your link for yeah. the books is also on that channel. Yeah. Or yeah, on Amazon, you can look up my name for the books or go through my website for that. And too. I've I've seen as well that everything that I found was all five star reviews, which is great. So congratulations <laughs> <Thanks>. on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so thank you very much and i'll make sure I put, yeah not thoroughly enjoyed it. i'll make sure i put all the links both on the audio and the video so people can find your books as well as uh, the spa that for the soul great thank you so much roy this has been really wonderful i've been loved the energy today in your show no thoroughly enjoyed it thank you and i'll send some meditation. more meditations for okay. later. brilliant brilliant so that's all for the meditation podcast as well as the awakening podcast and those that don't know i've started playing around with putting the videos on spotify as well so if you're a spotify user you'll actually find this both on the meditation and the awakening podcast you find everything about me bio.link forward slash podcaster Be sure to give us a thumbs up five star rating share with your friends until next week take care <laughs>